Hi everyone, this is going to be a video walkthrough of problem one on CS61B Spring 2021, exam prep discussion number five on iterators and iterables. Okay, so going to this question, I expect you guys to have a basic understanding of iterators and iterables, and I'll be emphasizing an intuition on how to approach iterator questions in the future, as well as iterables in the future. Okay, so let's just first gain a basic understanding of what this problem is asking. Then I'll ask you guys to pause the video. You guys can try it on your own. And then we can come back and go over the solution together. OK. So we want to make a filtered list class that selects only certain elements of a list during iteration. To do so, we're going to use the predicate interface defined below. Note that it has a method, test, that takes in an argument and returns true if we want to keep this argument or false otherwise. OK. So we have this interface predicate. And we're somehow going to use this predicate interface to tell us which objects in the list to keep or discard during iteration. OK, so suppose that we have L, which is some object that implements a list of string. OK, so what we can do is we can create a new filtered list right? that has strings in it and that works on the given list and it selects items with this given filter okay and it says right here that what this fl is is an iterable this is very important that contains all the items x in l for which filter dot test of x is true right where filter implements the predicate interface and we need to fill the filtered list class below okay so with this in mind, I'm going to move to my laptop so we can live code the solution because I think it's a bit better to approach with code. So give me a quick second. And we have it pulled up. Exciting. OK, so I'm going to enter my presentation mode. Do, 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 do. View, appearance, presentation mode. Exciting. OK, perfect. So now let's kind of dive into the code. So this is basically the code that we have given. It's actually a little less than the provided code, but I think it's a good place for where to start. OK, so to recap, what we're doing here is we have a list L, and we have a filter, which is some predicate. And we need to, and I kind of defined the predicate here. I kind of went ahead and created the interface predicate, and I said, here's some class x that implements the predicate interface. OK. And then in my example, I just said, like, my predicate is everybody that's equal to 1. OK. But anyways, not really relevant, just a bit of preparation. So what we're trying to do is we're taking a list L and a filter, and we want to iterate over all the elements L for which filter is true. OK. And filtered list should be an iterable. So the first thing, which the code already did for us, but I think it's really good to do ourselves, is we want to say that we are an iterable. And I think it's really cool doing this in IntelliJ because it tells us that we can implement the methods. So the cool feature about an iterable is that you only have to implement one of these three methods. In this class, we will always implement the iterator method. So, OK, exciting. So filtered list t, we are now an iterable. What does it mean to be an iterable, right? For a class to be an iterable, it means we must have this iterator method, OK? So this iterator method should return an iterator over the given class. Well, we don't have an iterator over the given class. So what we need to do is we need to create a new, I'm going to call it a filtered list iterator, OK? And let's create an inner class. So we created a new filtered list iterator. And in order for something to be an iterator, it must implement the iterator interface. OK? And I think IntelliJ is really cool, which is why I wanted to do this in IntelliJ, is that it recognizes that filtered list iterator is an iterator, right? It implements the iterator interface, but it doesn't have the methods that we need. So if we highlight over, we'll see we can implement these two methods. Exciting. So all we've done so far with the help of IntelliJ is recognize that filtered list is an iterable, which means it must have this iterator method. 
In order to return an iterator, we need to create one. So we will do so in the private class filtered list iterator, which implements iterator. And in order to implement iterator, we need to have these two methods. Phew, OK. That was a lot. Before we get to this method or this class right here, let's backtrack and fill in the constructor and the relevant instance attributes of the filtered list class. OK, so I'm going to create two. We'll create a filtered list called L. And we can also create a predicate filter. OK, let's say this dot L is equal to L and this top filter is equal to filter. Exciting. So we just kind of like bound all of the attributes. And we also need to create a constructor for the filtered list iterator class. So let's create Got the parentheses. That's my bad. So we just created a quick constructor. And over here, I didn't really pass anything into the constructor. And the reason I didn't pass anything in is because this private class filter list iterator has access to these attributes, OK? Because it's an inner class. So we don't actually need to pass in these attributes since we have access to them already. Nice. So OK. Now we're really into like diving into the logic of this code. So I kind of want to take a step back and approach the logic for this iterator question and iterator questions in general. OK? So give me a second. So suppose that we have the following list. Let's say 0, 10, 2, 3, and 11. And let's say that our predicate chooses items that are greater than or equal to 10. This is our predicate. OK, so what we want our iterator to go through are the elements 10 and 11, right? These are the elements that should get spit out by the filtered list iterator, OK? So when we approach the logic of implementing an iterator, most of the work comes in this method next, OK? And I like to break down the next method into a few parts. And I think this is very important, so I definitely recommend paying attention for here because I think it's good intuition for future parts. OK, so the first thing, this is like usually a default that we need. If we say if not has next, then we want to throw a new no such element exception. OK, this is just saying if anybody ever calls the next method and there's nothing left in the iterator, let's raise an exception. OK, but what's important in this next method is I'm going to break it up into three parts. OK, so step one is step one is going to be extract the item to output. OK, so this is very important. And I'm going to talk about in step two why it's so important. In step two, I have to think about is prepare for the next time we call next. OK, so every time we call next, what we want to happen is that we're already at the correct place in the list to extract the item we need. OK, this is a very good like coding practice for iterators, is that whenever we call the next method, we're already at the correct place in the list where the next element is, OK? In other words, like we can just simply extract this item, and there's no work that needs to be done before extracting this item, OK? Because we're making a contract between us and this next method saying every time next is called, we're assuming that we've already done the work to prepare to get at the correct spot in the list, OK? And that's what comes in step two, is that after extracting the item we want to output, we want to prepare for the next time we call next, OK? So in this case, what we want to do is somehow move 
where we are in this list, okay? And I'll walk through the logic later. I just wanna get these three steps down first. And then step three is return this item, okay? So a quick recap on what these steps are is that every time we call next, we're gonna get the item we wanna return. And we're assuming that the work has already been done where there's very little that needs to be done to extract this item. And the second thing is we wanna prepare for the next time we call next, okay? And then the final thing is we want to return the item we got before, okay? And I think this, if this is kind of confusing these steps, it'll make a lot more sense in the context of this problem. Okay, so my idea here for the logic of approaching this question is let's keep track of an index. Okay. And the index is gonna keep track of where we are in this list, okay? So here's like the general idea for this code is that we're gonna have in this filter list iterator class, we will have some sort of int index. We can say private int index, okay? And then in here, we'll set the index equal to zero. And then what we're going to do is that we'll every time we extract the item at index, and we're going to assume that before calling next, index has been set appropriately to the next place in the list where the element lives at, okay? So how that's going to look here is we will say, let's get, let me just remember what I called it. I think it was L dot get at index. Okay. So what we're doing is we're getting the item at index. Okay. So the next thing that we're going to do is prepare for the next time we call next. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this helper method move index, which will move index down this list until we find the next element that satisfies the predicate, okay? So let's quickly create that. So I'm gonna create this method called move index and what it's gonna do is move the index instance attribute to the next spot in the list where an element that satisfies, let's move to a new line. The predicate is, okay. So let's worry about this method later. And then the last thing that we wanna do is return the item, okay? So this logic actually indeed holds and I just wanna quickly walk through one example of how it's gonna work, okay? But we're actually missing like one quick step is that the first time the next method is called we haven't actually set the index appropriately, right? Because the only work we did on the index was setting it equal to zero. So we also need to move the index in the constructor so that it starts at the correct spot, okay? So let's just like walk through an example to see if this logic makes sense. So when we create a filtered list iterator, the first thing that we do is we set the index equal to zero. In this case, the index is equal to zero in this example, okay? So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to move this index until it's at the proper spot for where the next element to iterate over is, okay? So how that's gonna look is assuming the move index method works correctly, we will move the index right here, okay? Now, what we'll do is that whenever somebody calls this next method, what will happen is we will get the item at this index. So then this item will be equal to 10. We will move index and assuming that our code for the move index is implemented correctly, what we wanna happen is that index now will go here, right? And then we will return the item, which is 10, right? Cause that's what we stored from up here, okay? Now, the next time we call next, we notice that we can just simply execute l.getIndex because index has been set appropriately from the previous time, right? Then what we do is we move the index. In this case, 
we just want to say that like now we're out of bounds. Right? Index is like there's nobody else to iterate over. And then we return the item. In this case, in this case, it was 11. Okay. So this is the logic for how we want to approach iterating over this iterator. And I think we can extrapolate this to many iterator questions in the future. But let's quickly finish up the move index method and has next. And then I think we're good for this question. Okay. So let's jump back to this move index method. What we want to do here is while the value at the index, okay, is in bounds. So while we'll say index is less than list dot, it's L, my bad, L dot size, and the index element sat is false, right? When called on the filter function and filter dot test list dot, or keep doing this, L dot get index is not true, right? What we want to do is say index plus equals one. Okay. So just to recap what's happening here is we want to keep incrementing the index by one, keep moving it down this list until we're either out of bounds or the element that we're currently at is true when called on the test method of the filter, right? Okay. So then we also know that eventually the index won't be less than the size, in which case that we're out of bounds and there's nobody left. So this is what has next should be. And just to like make the code a little more readable, we can say something along these lines. So while there is somebody else, right? right while the index is in bounds, we will test the current element, right? The current element at index. And if that is false, we will keep iterating, right? So this is the logic. And yeah, this is the code for the entire class. I hope you guys enjoyed this video walkthrough and I'll see you guys in the next one.